Hello everyone. Today's soaps, I'm going to make a goat milk, mocha java mint, and also a wild peppermint. I'll put my full recipe in the description box below. Uh, we'll get on to making soap. Um, here I'm measuring oils and I'm going to start with my olive oil. You don't have to start in like any, the oils don't have to be in any certain, uh, you know, order or anything. But um, I do know one thing, olive oil, it, you know, it comes in like a darker uh, full olive oil or the extra virgin and the lighter the oil, the lighter your soap will be. Here I'm using castor oil. Um, I always put it in all my recipes. It's not only really good for your skin, but it makes your soap bubbly, extra bubbly. And, um, and then my, oh my gosh, I love shea butter so much. It is so good for your skin, um, especially if you have psoriasis or um, eczema or anything like that. It's really good with the goat's milk. Nourish your skin. And of course, coconut oil is amazing for skin. And um, it also really makes your your bar hard and more bubbly too. So I, I mean, coconut oil is like a number one staple in all my soap recipes. Um, and I usually melt my coconut oil before I um, measure it out, but I didn't have time, so I just spooned it out. But it's really kind of hard to do if it's like hard. But then I heat all my oils. Um, I just throw them in the crock pot and start them heating. And then I'll go to uh, measuring out my goat milk and my water. And here I use frozen goat milk. I always make up uh, ice cubes because uh, lye will scold your milk. So um, you want to try to keep it as cold as possible. Um, and I, you always use distilled water. I had to double check my recipe there. And get it just right and then I'll just set this in the sink and let it sit um, while I measure out my lye. Now with the virus that's going around and everything I have just had so much trouble getting gloves so I do not have gloves um, right now. I found some on Amazon I need to order um, and I will link all my links in the description below if you guys need gloves too because I know that it's really hard to get them that and masks like you know any kind of masks that you might need for working they're just they're not around um but it did occur to me i probably could get dishwashing gloves and i'm going to do that today or tomorrow because i really do not like using lye without gloves uh the little crystals just like ping everywhere and i don't know if it's static electricity or what but they just they escape out of the you know, while you're pouring it and they just get everywhere and you got to clean them up. And if you don't have gloves, you'll get one under your nail or, you know, you just get, get them all over. And, um, I mean, it's not going to burn a huge hole in you or anything, but it's pretty annoying. Now here you always pour lye into water. You don't ever want to pour water into lye. It's just a really not a good thing to do. It can splash up on you or bubble up or whatever. So you want to make sure that you always just pour it into the water. And I immediately stir it off the bottom and just break it up real quick. And then I go to, um, I, I'll rinse out my lye container that had the lye crystals in it. Because you don't ever want that sitting around. If you have kids or pets or anything, a cat get up there and drink out of it or whatever. You just want to make sure that you rinse it out immediately. It's a good habit to get into. Um, I mean, lye is pretty safe if you just use all kinds of safety precautions, you know, and it's not that big of a deal. Um, as you can see, the lye is already turning the soap. It's scalding the soap a little bit, even though, it, I mean the soap, the milk, that it's frozen. Um, and it turns it just a little bit yellow. Um, yeah, there, I was just checking my, checking my oils. And while the oils are heating and the lye is just sitting there cooling off, I'm gonna go ahead and mold my, um, or line my mold. And here I'm using freezer paper. You can use parchment paper, that works really good too. Um, I just always buy freezer paper. Um, 
and you can use a silicone mold, but with hot process soap, they get pretty hot. Um, I just, I, I've always used a wooden mold. Um, I made my own molds. And here I tape my mold, my, uh, my paper down because when you pour your soap in there, it, it can crease and wrinkle and do weird things and, um, or like, I don't know, it just does all kinds of strange things. And sometimes I've skipped that step and regretted it. Here I'm making a divider out of cardboard because half my soap is going to be just plain peppermint and then the other half is going to be mocha java mint. So I do this a lot, especially like if I'm doing lavender and then a lavender tea tree or something that, you know, can share the same kind of soap is great. Um, I've done it where I've done two totally different soaps and two different pots of soaps, but I do this a lot when I have people order. Um, now here the, the oils are pretty much melted down, so I'm going to pour the lye water, the lye and milk water in here. And just make sure you really get it all because, you know, it is science. It's got to be pretty precise. And then I'll stir it just a little bit, make sure that it all looks good. And everything's pretty creamy. And then at this point, I'll go ahead and start using my stick blender on it. And I'll bring it up to um, what's called light trace. And it doesn't take really long. Um, if you were doing cold process soap, you would probably need to te check your temperatures and make sure your lye water and your oils were within 30 degrees of each other. But with hot process, I found that really doesn't matter. So I just throw it in there no matter what. I, but I, I'm sure they were really close anyway because the oils were pretty hot and the lye was pretty hot. I soak pretty quick. As soon as I make it, I don't have to like wait for anything. Now I add kaolin clay right here and kaolin clay makes your soap give it like a little slick feel to it. I just love it. it it's just something I always put in all my soap. But I do it right at light trace or right before trace um, where it's really liquidy because it's easier to blend in. And sometimes when your oils are hot and your lye is hot, it just depends. Your soap can come to trace really fast and be hard to work with. So now this is considered light trace right here. Maybe even just right before, but it's starting to stick to my blender. So I'm just going to put the lid on and let it cook for a while. And then come back about 20 minutes later and it's like a heavy trace. It's, you know, it's pretty thick. And it's going to have to come to a gel phase. So I'm going to turn up the heat and just let it sit for a little bit more. And it's getting close here. It's starting to really turn oily on the edges and stuff where it's hotter. And I'm just going to break up these big, chunky, thick trace pieces and get them to where they'll come into gel. And this doesn't really take long. The hotter your crock pot is, the faster it goes, but you don't want to force it too fast. Just, I mean, it's going to do its own thing no matter what, but some of my soaps like do a gel phase, like my honey soap, which anything sugary, it makes your soap hotter and it, uh, it'll come to like where it's almost pure oil, but it's easy to bring it back together. It, it's, it's not a problem at all, but some soaps don't do it at all. They'll just barely, you'll barely even see the change, you know. It'll go to a gel phase, but you really won't notice it. Um, but I'm just going to let it cook some more and do its science thing that it does, making soap. And I'll keep checking it every, um, probably about every 10 or 15 minutes. You don't ever want to walk away when it's doing this process right here and, like, leave your house or something or even leave the room for very long because I've come back and had a, so a pot of soap bubble over a volcano over and go all down the cabinet and everything. That was with a cranberry orange. That was crazy. But here I, I blend the soap back with uh, the stick blender, but sometimes it's, it's a lot hotter than you think it is, and the stick blender, it'll get real thick in there, and it's, you know, I don't want to burn up my blender. So here I'll use a little elbow grease, and I'll really stir the soap back together. But it's really cool. I love it. It just, you watch it just, you know, come back to soap, it'll make, it'll be finished, you know, right before your eyes. 
So it goes through all the traces, goes to gel, and then it comes back. And once it gets to this stage, it won't change again. It's just, now it's soap. It's just gonna have to cool. And um, it didn't take long at all. It doesn't take long at all. And people say, like when it's finished, you'll notice it looks kind of like Vaseline or something, or mashed potatoes is what I call it. But this gives me time right here while it's cooling to mix my peppermint, peppermint with spirulina. Um, you don't have to do it this way. Um, I notice, like when you do it, when you do add your oil, your essential oil to your powder to pepper or to spirulina anyway, it maybe has like a different color, like maybe an olive color to it, or a little little bit more brown colors, which I absolutely love with my lemongrass. But I wanted a little bit more vibrant green in this. But I just did this. I don't even know why I did it, but. Um, just added the peppermint oil in there, and it, it's put, it kind of you know, when it makes it more creamier. Like the like when you add just spirulina, you'll have like little specks of green in there, um, which is super good for your skin to get that spirulina and everything. But um, and I like that look too. But you can get a real creamy green when you add the oils to the the powder. But adding just plain spirulina straight to it makes it very vibrant green. Now, I use piping, racks, piping rock spirulina, and I just love it. I, I, I take it, and I give it to my pets, and then I use it for all my soap making, too. But I'll leave that link to my peppermint, I mean to my peppermint, to my spirulina from Piping Rock in the description box below. Now, here, since I'm uh, making, you know, I'm... I'm going to line the whole bottom of it with peppermint because both sides are going to be using the peppermint. But I'm going to put the divider in and then just fill one side just filled with peppermint here. But um, It's a lot easier when both sides are using one full soap. So. Now I'm going to, I divided the pot, you know, when it was cool. Um, and I'm going to add the mocha java mint or the mocha java here, which is just cacao powder and coffee crystals, um, like a instant coffee. And, oh, and a little bit of fractionated coconut oil to, you know, make that like an oil. And this is gonna make it really creamy. And it wasn't as dark and cream, it, it wasn't as dark and rich as I wanted it to be. So I went ahead and added a little bit more of the, cacao powder <laughs> and it's amazing it's like the, the the mocha part the 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 chocolatey part will it will suds up a little bit with a, a kind of a brownish color but for the most part it suds really really um white and it just smells so amazing like chocolate and coffee it's just oh it's so good and the coffee it, the is so good for your skin tightens pores and everything and the chocolate is very nourishing. It has all kinds of antioxidants and stuff. So all this stuff is very beneficial for your skin, even though it, you know, oh my gosh, Mocha Java Mint, you know. But it's really got benefits for your skin. And the peppermint is amazing too. It's like, you know, it's very invigorating and wakes you up. And it, uh, super, super soap in the summertime. It makes you very cool. Um, it's not such a good soap for a nighttime shower because it it does wake you up this I mean you're gonna get the aromatherapy in the shower and everything so but here I'm gonna bang out my air bubbles and I did an in the pot swirl with the spoon that's what I was doing I was just like pulling up the green and then I'm gonna get a fork here and just kind of like fix my tops to make them look better Like, yeah, they just kind of pull them off the sides because when you pound it down, it it kind of spreads out. And then I'm adding a little bit of dried peppermint here. I'll add it to both sides. And that just, that doesn't really do a whole lot other than like when somebody picks it up and smells it, it just smells amazing. And it's a little bit of an anti, anti, uh, exfoliant. But yeah, we'll wait. I'll have to wait about 12 hours now for it to set up. And 
then here's 12 hours later it's all set up I absolutely love to unmold my soap it's like Christmas morning or something it's just so much fun it's in the last six years I've been making soap it's just never gotten old there I had to bang it loose a little bit now I found if you get your soap out the quicker you get your soap out are my recipes anyway not all recipes but the quicker you get it out, the easier it is to work with and the easier it is to get the paper off. If you let it sit for over 72 hours, it can, the paper starts to stick, stick to the soap. So to me, I like to do it as quick as possible. And it's completely cool. And it's a little sticky here, but not bad. Like it's ready to cut and let start curing. And definitely want to cut and dry these soaps in a dark container like a dark cabinet or something because they'll lose their color I mean they're a hundred percent natural you know and there's no preservatives or anything in them so they need to be kept that way and they need to be used pretty fresh within the first six months or so I would say and they need to cure just like maybe a week at the most the longer they cure the harder the bar and the more you know it stays but yeah be sure to check out my store on Etsy and um, earthanswers.com and like my video, subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching.